everybody. Uh, welcome back. Today is March 14th, 2024. This is Master Advisor episode number 86. Um, we have a really cool topic today, really something I'm, I'm very excited about. We're going to talk a little bit about having a positive mindset. I'm really excited to get into it to introduce our guest. But first, I just want to make a few announcements, and I also want to introduce our speaker for today. Um, first things first, however, I do want to thank everyone who came out to Travel Marketplace last week in Vancouver. Uh, it was really great to meet so many of you. I hope you enjoyed the conference as much as our team enjoyed hosting you all out at the uh, at the JW Park Marriott. Um, it was our largest show, show ever. We tried a lot of new things, and we're really looking forward to adapting the content and the schedule for our next couple of shows. The first one in Toronto in June, and the next one in Calgary in September. So keep an eye out if you are in those areas or have interest in coming to those areas for some announcements for some registration opportunities, things like that. Um, but yeah, it was really great to meet meet everyone who I met last week, and I didn't want to I didn't want to forget to say uh, to say thank you to everyone who came out. Um, I also wanted to thank everyone who came out for the episode a few weeks ago with Jamie Anderson. If you missed that, we got into a lot in that talk. We touched on fees. We talked a lot about client communications, uh, the sort of general philosophy of running an agency and how you operate within a large organization, things like that. It was a really great talk. It was something we hadn't done before. Um, and I just want to give you a heads up. If you do want to catch that, it's on our YouTube page. Uh, we'll drop the link to the YouTube page in the chat now, but you can watch it for free on demand anytime you want, any anytime you have a second that you're not busy, which I know is rare these days. But um, if you do overhead over there, go ahead and drop a like on the video, drop a subscription. Um, I, I know I mentioned it every couple of weeks here, but it really does help us continue to grow this channel and continue to grow this community and bring you these episodes every couple of weeks. Um, and then last thing before I introduce our sponsor, just a couple of quick tips for watching today's session. Um, speaker view is gonna be the best way to view it. And I know everyone's used to Zoom at this point, but you can toggle in and out of speaker view on the top right of your screen. And then if you do wanna open the chat up, uh, sometimes you have to hit the more button on the Zoom and the chat op option will come up, but uh, we'll do our best to incorporate comments and questions from the chat as we go along today. Um, so don't be shy, drop, drop your questions or comments, your concerns in there. And uh, I really love sort of having that as a part of these discussions. Um, all right, so before I introduce our guest, I'm really, really happy to welcome our sponsor for today's episode. Uh, we have David Benz from Delta Vacations, who's here to tell us a little bit about um, what's going on with, with Delta before, uh, before we open it up. Hey, thanks, Daniel. And hello, everyone. My name is David Benz, as you mentioned, I'm Director of Sales with Delta Vacations based here in Atlanta. So hello from an earlier spring here in the Southeast. And I'm really excited about uh, this topic. Actually, I was really excited when this came about, about the positive mindset driving success uh, for all of us. Because I think that just really plays well into something that's become more and more in focus of you know, our positive thinking, our well-being, and that optimism uh, being a, just a key place or a key way that we all deal with our day to day. There's so many things that come our way. I was talking with a colleague just you know about this topic and how we do things. And it was a really interesting quote, if you will. It was, the unpleasant doesn't necessarily go away, but our approach of being more positive and productive is how we can. Um, and that's something our people really here at Delta Vacations and even our parent company, Delta Airlines, are really focused in on. You know, notably the pandemic brought forward, you know, the need to look at how we do, do all of that, how we um, focus in on our own health, our own wellness, um, prioritizing ourselves and, and just empowering, you know, empowering what we can do to achieve that balance and positivity. And that's something I'm really excited with our BDM team out there that's working with you day to day that have really embraced this. Um, that being balanced, having that positivity really helps out so much in our discussions together and how we work with each other, how we collaborate, the partnership, and truly is at the end of the day what makes us all thrive, which is our relationships. And one of the things that I was talking about the BDM um, earlier today, she said, I, I really appreciate it, is you have to give yourself that permission sometimes. It can be so easy to be at our desks or in a destination or working with customers and to give yourself permission to take that break, um, to seek humor um, was one of the ways that this person in this BDM really liked it. You know, you've got to find a way to laugh, at, laugh at life a little bit, makes you feel less stressed. And we all have our own different ways to do that. 
Um, another BDM really enjoys just getting out of the, on the fresh air, especially now that it's spring, sitting on the patio at 70 degrees, um, take advantage of it. So, so many way, um, things out there that can be done. And I've been just, like I mentioned, really looking forward to this discussion. Um, we've got a lot of things that have been going on at Delta Vacations, but I really know we're focused in on you know that mindset today. So stay up to date with us um, in worldagentdirect.com. We've got all of our key updates, our news. We're launching a lot of new destinations. Um, Curacao is going year round. We actually announced some other um, destinations like Auckland that's on the books coming now. We've got some new Europe and uh, Delta is having its largest uh, footprint, basically its largest schedule to Latin America right now. So a lot of great opportunities and destinations and vacations that are out there for you. Stay connected with your BDMs. If you're not sure who they are, we're happy to connect you. So please reach out to us so we can make sure we bring those two together. Appreciate all of you. Um, it's been an incredible ride these last couple of years, and we all come out successful together. And I just want to say thanks again for your partnership. Daniel, back to you. Thanks you again for letting us be a part of this. Thank you, David. And I know I speak to so many advisors and I know, like you mentioned, Latin America and South America, too, is, is are becoming really big destinations for advisors. So it's great to hear from you. Um, and thank you again for, for joining us today. Um, yeah. So with that, I'm really happy to introduce our today's guest. Uh, Heather Stewart is joining us today. Heather is a life and success coach who works with Travel Masters in Canada, where she also works as a recruiting and support manager. Uh, she's here to talk to us about positive mindset and how that can help you as an entrepreneur, as a travel advisor. We'll talk about different point of views today. It's a conversation I'm really excited to have. But before we do, uh, I want to say welcome, Heather, and thank you so much for joining us today. Ah, thank you so much. I mean, I actually feel like David should be running this session. <laughs> His talk was so good. Thank you so much for that, David. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice when we do have a sponsor who's who gets in, I uh, gets in the spirit, I guess you could say, with the topic. It. So it was it was great. Um, yeah. So Heather, I know we have a lot to get to. Joining us, I'm I'm looking forward to this. So thank you so much, and for you, Daniel, for allowing me to come on. Yeah. Um. So I know we have a lot to get to. Um, I was hoping we could just start off by you telling us a little bit about your history in the travel industry. I know you worked as a frontline agent at one point. I know you've moved through different roles. Um, but yeah. tell us a little bit about your background and a little bit about uh, sort of yourself as, as we get into the topic. Sure. Yeah. So I am now in my 20th year in travel. I started at a mall retail shop in Richmond, B.C., back in 2004. And then I moved into a team leader role into a different shop uh, a year later. And then I moved to the UK to work with corporate travel. And when I came back to Canada in 2007 is when I moved into like a product development and trainer role. And so I've been doing that ever since. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of, I know there's Canadians on with us today too. Uh, where are you located in Canada for those wondering? <laughs> So Travel Masters is based in Vancouver, and but I actually live in Newfoundland. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so I know we're talking about a sort of a topic that fits into the wellness space today, and I know that's something you're particularly passionate about. Um, what is your role within the wellness space and what got you interested in this kind of this kind of topic? Yeah, so after having my daughter in 2015 and when I returned to work, I struggled a lot with overwhelm and burnout and I was staring down the barrel of a very severe a severe depression. I had been depressed before as a, as a teenager and I just didn't want to do that. So I really started taking my mindset and my mental health very seriously to try and avoid it getting continually worse. And what I realized when I was doing my work on my own mindset and my own mental health is that there are so many key things about how our minds work that are not taught to most people. And it's like, I feel like we need a handbook on how to actually uh, use the, the mind that we have and our emotions and things like that. So I wanted to, I decided that I wanted to impact people's lives, not just helping them grow their business, but as well as helping their mind and help them, their emotions and help them feel better in that, in their life. So I became a certified life and success coach during the pandemic because I had some time and um, I really focus on helping people stop burnout and find what I call bliss, which is really just a fancy word for balance and calm in crazy busy lives. <laughs> Yeah. And I know what like I know the stigma around mental health and around around this kind of topic has almost dissolved or is dissolving within society. But 
it is like having these discussions or having um particular or doing this on purpose and making sure this is something you realize and something that is an active thing in your life seems to be important and uh it seems to be something that's more common now and I'm, I'm curious if it's common for you heather like around the conversations you have both inside and outside of the industry yeah i think people are a lot more aware of it because of social media and just the ease of communications with people i feel like it's come to the forefront more often because one a lot of people suffer with uh, depression and other mental health um, issues. And so we're, we're feeling a lot more comfortable and confident talking about it because it's something that we so often are, are experiencing. Um, so that has actually really helped bring it to the forefront more, more so. Um, so today's topic, we particularly mentioned a positive mindset mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to focus a lot of the discussion on today. Oh, why is a positive mindset something that you focus on as a coach or something that you feel particularly need, uh, wanting to talk about? Yeah, so if you think about our lives, it's really just a series of experiences. And our mindset is actually how we filter and interpret each one of those experiences. So what I found through my own journey and working with my clients is that if our filter is altered or skewed more negatively, it can really have a huge impact on our life as a whole. Um, for example, I'll use an example of my own. Um, after I had my daughter, I went back to work. I used to have an hour and a half commute to the office every day. And my life seemingly was pretty perfect. I had a great home. I had a great husband and an amazing daughter and an amazing job in a really great business, really great industry. But because I hated that commute so much, my negative uh, emotions bled over and actually started impacting how I felt about everything else in my life. I started being unhappy in my house. I started being unhappy in my job and in my relationships and started feeling like I wasn't a capable parent. So it's one of those things that can really impact how you view everything in your life. And something I want to do is I want to clarify the mindset work isn't about being happy all the time. And it's not about being positive all the time. Because that's just not real life. Like as humans, yeah. we're emotional. That's part of what being a human is all about. And it's not just about having positive emotions. But things in our life are always going to test us. They're always going to be things in our life that have us feeling negative emotions and a positive mindset has far more to do with our understanding of our abilities and being able to choose how we feel as well as understanding our strengths and ability to adapt and grow and believing that no matter what happens we're going to be okay there's a saying that i've seen quite a bit on social media and it says that you've gotten through a hundred percent of your worst days and that's what a positive mindset is. It's looking at those worst days and seeing it through the lens of, well, that day sucked, but I got through it and I did okay. And if there's some something like that happens again, I can grow and adapt and maybe get through it better next time. Yeah. Being able to choose how you feel, that's a pretty, I guess, powerful statement. It, it seems like something that's almost impossible, I know, for a lot of people. No. Um, <laughs> it seems so simple, Heather, Like, but... Is, is is it as simple as that is, is choosing to feel better when you are you know do have these depression depressed feelings it is it, it's it's simple in theory it's harder in action you know what i mean and so and we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to try and and switch those um those emotions into ones that are more effective for you but yeah it truly is about understanding that you have control over how you think and how you feel um your emotions and feelings are happening to you but you can choose how you want to to feel but it, it takes a process in order to re rewrite a, a lifetime yeah. of patterns and and habits yeah, it is interesting because I mean this profession. All and we'll talk, get it. We'll get more specific in a second. But yeah, uh, the the issues that the more common issues people uh, travel advisors have had have sort of shifted tremendously over the past five years or so. Like from the from the lows of COVID having no business to now having maybe too much business or it's it's too hectic things like that. Um, it is. I think this these tools are going to be important because you're going to get different problems as you progress through life and being able to deal with negative problems, no matter what category they can fall into, I think is going to be incredibly exactly. powerful. Yeah. 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 And it's all about understanding our own abilities to get through those things. Okay. 
Um, so let's talk about why you think this is a particularly important topic uh, for child advisors. Um, yeah. Again, like I mentioned, there's a, like there's a wide gamut of issues advisors have depending on where they're located, what they sell. But uh, I know this is going to be important for everybody. Yeah. So there's so much about being a travel advisor that's out of our control. Suppliers, clients, world pandemics. <laughs> um, yeah. And another thing I actually want to say is that this actually helped me immensely when I was doing my own work um, and hopefully someone out there, it, it will resonate with them as well. But the reason that we are more negative is because as humans, we are hardwired to be more aware of and take on negativity easier. Fundamentally, as people, we listen to negativity as a way of protection. So if you think about us as small kids, we are hyper aware of the negativity um, of our caregivers because that's what keeps us safe. If our caregivers are like, Heather, don't touch that, that's that's a negativity that we have to be aware of. And it's called the negative bias. So as agents, um, when the negative things happen that are especially out of our control, we tend to take on the negative mentality easier because it's safer and more comfortable for us. But the negative mindset can really hold us back. As travel agents, we're unique because we have to be the masters of all the things, sales, technology, product, marketing, and be visionaries. And we have to do everything. And so much of that for a lot of travel agents is very uncomfortable. They love selling travel. They love looking at travel, but they're not necessarily great at marketing. They're not really great at technology. And so it feels very uncomfortable and unsafe. And so I've seen over the years, a lot of agents fall into that safe, ineffective patterns of a negative mindset, being stagnant and not adapting to business challenges out of fear and being consistently annoyed or pessimistic or um, remaining in a state of overwhelm or burnout because they're not willing to try different things and not implementing healthy boundaries because the only fulfillment that they're getting is through the work that they do. And so much of being a successful travel agent is the ability to make genuine connections with people. So our clients want to feel connected to the agent that they work with. And sometimes when we ha are, have a negative lens um, on our mindset, we can really struggle to make those connections and continue those connections because we're often guarded and feeling annoyed or suspicious or frustrated or frankly uninterested. Um, and again, this is just a way of us protecting ourselves on a subconscious level, but our clients can feel that energy. They can feel that there's a barrier between you and them. And it's a it's a subconscious way to communicate, telling them they're like, no, I don't want, I don't want to help you right now. Yeah. And not to mention the overall negative emotions can spread like a cancer, like the example I gave you before uh, with my commute. If if we're looking at something. Uh, through a negative lens, like I said, my commute, it can be, you can begin to perceive other negative things around us that aren't actually negative, which is really dangerous and frankly, doesn't feel good on anyone. Um, so we had, a, we had a great comment in the chat uh, specifically about burnout, Heather. I, I think we'll tack that on to the end of the discussion. Hopefully we can tackle burnout in particular yeah. um, because of something you mentioned too. Um, yeah. All right, so I want to get into particulars, uh, sort of recognizing what might be an issue uh, before we learn how to deal with it. Um, you mentioned your commute was something that maybe was dragging you down. And I know it's a fairly <laughs> obvious question, but what kind of things in your life can really affect your mindset? Um, and I'm sure there are a number of things that maybe you don't even necessarily realize are affecting how you think. Yeah. So our mind is a really clever muscle. It's very, very, very clever. And it cloaks things um, negatively as a, as a reality. So it, it'll convince you that something is negative, even though that's not actually real. So um, it's like that saying says, you can't see the forest through the trees. We become involved and consumed by the negative emotions that we're experiencing that we don't even realize because there's, there just doesn't seem to be another way. Um, I hear it a lot and it's just the way I am is what I hear a lot. Well, you don't, you're not born negative. It's a, it's a learned thing. So 
And yes, while we are hardwired to lean into more negativity, negativity for safety reasons, that doesn't need that we need protecting from the perceived threats that we're protecting ourselves from, putting ourselves out there in marketing or um, changing our business to make it adaptable and work better for us. Um, and it's not that we're not capable of doing the hard things uh, and still being okay through them. Our, our mind convinces us that that we can't do it. And that's not true. We can do it. We may not be able to do it the way we originally think, but we're adaptable and we're not, we're not a finished product. So a negative mindset is natural, but it's not going to help us to live a happy, healthy, balanced, successful career in life. Um, all right. Um, and another great comment from Jennifer in the chat too. Uh, she says she she avoids talking to clients on some days when she maybe is stuck in that negative mindset, which yeah. is uh, hopefully, again, we can give you some tips to deal with that, but it's probably yeah. a good but I think I think that awareness in and of itself is is yeah. is good to have. Like if you're really not in a state that you're capable of speaking to a client in a way that is allowing you to connect with them on the way that they deserve, then then setting that boundary is actually really great. Um. All right. So let's talk about. I think we spoke earlier in the week, Heather, and the way you put it was removing the shackles of a negative mindset, which I thought was a really a really succinct way to to talk about the discussion we're going to have today. Um, yeah. I know it's a big question, but can we talk a little bit about how this process starts, or or how how the people on this call can maybe start tackling this 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 problem? Yeah. So unfortunately, they don't sell a positive mindset at Walmart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish they could, but they don't. <laughs> First thing um, I want to empower everyone with on this call, and it might sound a little annoying at first, but, and I mentioned, kind of mentioned that at the very beginning, but your mindset is 100% in your control. You aren't a victim to the mindset you have now or the one that you grew up with. Just because the way that's the way you were isn't necessarily how you have to be moving forward. And no one watching this today is a finished product. And if you really truly see the value in curating a more positive mindset, you absolutely can. Um, yes, it's going to take work. It's going to take a little bit of action, but you are 100% able to do it. So that belief is the first thing you need to do in order to have a more positive um, mindset. You have to believe that you can do it. And so if you go into mindset work already thinking that it's not going to work, it's like that saying you either th you think you can or you think you can't. Either way, you're right. It's 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 honestly true. Um, if you it's, it's about learning that you can grow and it's about learning that you can adapt. And if you want to read more about this, I, I wanted to recommend a really great book called Mindset by Carol Duick. It's an incredible life changing book that I've read probably three times. I've listened to a few times as well. And it's all talking about the difference between a growth mindset and a negative mindset. Again, it's not about being positive per se, but it's about understanding your abilities to grow and to adapt and that um, everyone has the ability to grow and adapt if you're open to it. So um, another thing I just wanna gift people with is that it doesn't take hours a day to change your mindset. It can literally take just a few minutes. I know when I when I thought about changing my mindset, it was gonna be this huge, big ordeal, but really it's just about taking minutes, but it's about being consistent and deliberate with those with that time. But we need to, basically, when it comes down to mindset work, we have to start poking holes in our thoughts and, and beliefs that aren't serving us anymore. So again, our mindset is a learned thing. So we learn it through the people around us and all those sorts of things. Um, but in order for us to change it, we have to look at it from a different perspective. We have to look at it from a from a way of like, okay, is that serving me? Is that is that helping me right now? Is this is this helping me to become the agent that I want to become or the person that I want to become? Um, you could say things like I. I, if you hear your thoughts or you notice a thought saying like, I'm not going to send out an email newsletter because no one's going to read it. It's about asking yourself, am I a fortune teller? Do I know that no one's going to read it? Do I know exactly what's going to happen in the future? Is that is that speculation based on reality or is that just my fear speaking? And and then it's about changing the thought from I, I'm, 
I, no one's going to read it. It's going to fail to, sure, someone may not read my newsletter right away, but I'm going to get practice. I'm going to get better. I'm going to talk about it with people. And in time, I bet people will read it because it, it's got good value. And because I know my stuff and I have so many people have told me that I have so much information to give that, yeah, people may not read it right away, but isn't that worth a shot? Just trying to get better at it and potentially later on working towards having a newsletter that's really powerful and impactful for people. Yeah. yeah. So first one is to, to have the belief you can do it and learn that you can grow and things can change and yeah. then start poking holes in the thoughts and beliefs that maybe aren't serving yeah. you. So th that's yeah. a couple of good first steps for advisors to take. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that second one, it's, it's just, it seems to be just playing devil's advocate to yourself almost. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes it can be hard to do that. So I, I recommend I have a few daily things that you can do to, to help do that. But sometimes it can take finding someone to speak to, to help you see things from a different perspective, to help you poke those holes. Because um, it's like I said, like sometimes when you're too close to it, when you're in the woods, you can't see from that different perspective. All you can see and feel is what you're thinking in that moment. It takes practice. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, yeah, it definitely does. And uh, yeah, it is interesting because number two seems like a very difficult task, particularly for people who maybe <laughs> are like entrenched in this negative mindset. Because like if, if you spend you spend your whole life with yourself, that's a weird thing to say, but. Um, it's true, it's so true. Yeah. yeah. And have, but you mentioned having someone to talk to, whether it is, I guess, someone that's professional or even someone in your life seems to be an important, important thing to have as well. Yeah, and I think the important thing about who you speak to, it isn't the friend or the colleague that is always on your side. <laughs> I mean that in a, in a way of like someone that's challenging, someone that's willing to challenge you and say, okay, well, what? Why do you think that? What like like I said in that in that example about do are you a fortune teller? Do you know that that's actually going to be the case? Do you know for sure that no one's ever going to read your newsletter? It's someone that that's strong enough and and able to to be that person that's not just going to be like, "No, no, no, you're good. You're good." You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. All right. Um okay. So, let's you mentioned there's a couple things you can maybe do daily, things that aren't going to take up a lot of time, which I know is an yeah. extremely valuable resource for advisors. Um yeah, yeah what what are some good general daily practices for maybe starting on this journey or for for changing your own mind, like you mentioned, or even for better talking to yourself uh, when it comes to this kind of thing? Yeah. And um, don't roll your eyes, everyone. <laughs> but journaling is one of the best ways. And I'll explain why. Um it's because, as I mentioned, you need to start looking at your thoughts and your beliefs from a different perspective. And so when you're always thinking about them in your mind, that's always the same perspective. If you just think about like your thought as a physical thing, if it's always up here, you're always looking at it from front on. So if you actually write it down on a piece of paper and read it, you're able to look at it from a different perspective. And it's an amazing way for you to look at it and be like, huh, okay. And that is when you can really start to poke holes in the current beliefs to figure out, okay, how is that serving me? How is that allowing me to move forward? Another thing that I wanna to empower people with is the expectation and the understanding that journaling takes hours. I used to think that, and, and maybe someone else on here uh, thinks that too. It doesn't take hours. It literally is about just realizing that there's a thought going on in your head that doesn't sit right or doesn't feel good um, and, and writing it down. It could be one to two minutes and you've wrote, written down one sentence, but it's just about making sure that you're putting it into a space where you can look at it from a different angle. And sometimes when I can't write something, I do an audio, um, an audio recording and listen to it at a later time so I can hear it from a different perspective as well. So it's not about curling up on a chair with a blanket and dumping everything in your mind because that just sounds awful. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's just about taking a few minutes to be like, okay, I don't feel good about this right now. What's going on? Um, and um, so an example I wanted to talk about is like, if you're saying, if you notice a thought in your head, like, oh my God, this client is so annoying. When you have a moment, write down that thought, like 
oh, the client's annoying. And then you can go back to doing whatever you're going to do. And when you have a moment, go back to that, that either voice recording or sentence and start asking yourself, how is that thought helping me in that moment? Did that thought help me do what I needed to do in that moment? Do I find that person really annoying or am I just feeling interrupted? Are they interrupting me from doing whatever else I was doing? Um, and then you can kind of move forward once you get a little bit further into, okay, why am I feeling like this? Do I need to implement another strategy to allow me to not feel interrupted? And to be able to give that client my full attention, or do I need to fire this client? It's it's one of those kind of internal discussions that we can have to help us point out, okay, what really is it about, what's the negativity about this interaction? Why am I feeling like, Ugh? you know what I mean? So it's just about asking those questions to ourselves. Yeah, and Heather, you said at the beginning of that, don't roll your eyes, but it it like is that does that tend to be the reaction when you do recommend journaling? I mean, I know yeah. it's uh it's a <laughs> thing that seems like children do more than adults, obviously. But yeah. uh it, yeah. It is, it truly is. And, uh, like journaling and meditation, anytime you hear that out in anyone, usually people that aren't doing those practices get very annoyed by it. But I also wanted to say, like when you're when you're acknowledging and witnessing your feelings, I want you to make sure that you are allowing the negative feelings. It's not about judging yourself for being annoying for the for the client um, messaging you or or interrupting you. Like it's not about not having that feeling, but it's about understanding why you have that feeling and figuring out one. Is there something that I need to do to make sure that I don't have those feelings moving forward? And um, if there is something more going on, how can you adapt things? How can you change things? How can you figure out a better way of doing things? Um, some some things that I often hear people um, with a negative mindset talk about is like, oh my God, I don't want to work today. Or I don't know anything about marketing or I'm so done with computers, technology is crazy. It's about coming up with these kind of rebuttals to, um, to, to practice when you have those negative thoughts. So this is one of my other tips is, is, is being prepared with common negative thoughts that you have um, while acknowledging the feeling. So if it's like, I don't wanna work today, like, oh my God, I don't wanna work today. Um, say, yeah, today, is going to be hard to work at first. And, but once I get into the swing of things, I'll actually enjoy chatting with my clients and thinking about their trips. And once I get some more research done, I'll be able to put that group out for people to experience. So it's being prepared for those negative, common negative thoughts that happen for you as well. Same with marketing. Like marketing is one of those things that I don't know, there's very few travel agents and maybe the, you guys can all <laughs> prove me wrong, but there's few travel agents that really love marketing. And a lot of people avoid it and they don't put themselves out there and they don't um, post on social media or they don't do the email newsletter. And instead of being like, oh, my God, I don't want to do this marketing today, come up with a way to spin it, acknowledging your feelings and saying, yeah, I'm not confident in this today, but I can ask someone for help or my friend's really good at this. I'm going to talk to her and I'm going to take notes. And I'm going to assure that next time that I'm going to work to feel more confident and it'll give me some uh, reassurance. Or technology, that's another big thing that travel agents struggle with. It's like, oh my God, I'm suck at technology. It's like, well, yes, I've struggled with it in the past, but I've been able to pick it up. And acknowledging what you've been able to accomplish can really help you change your mindset to, oh my God, this is awful, to I've actually learned quite a few different systems and it's helped me. And yeah, it may be hard for me to do and not as easy as a tech department, but I'll get there eventually. All right. So journaling, acknowledging when there isn't or acknowledging your negative feelings. And yeah. I guess, yeah, don't don't belittle yourself. Don't don't tell yourself that, you know, you're making you're doing something wrong by having negative negative feelings. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know that too, just yeah, to, recognizing those common negative thoughts that you have and coming up with a way to what I call stop sorry, spot, stop, and swap. So spot the negative thought that's coming. So if it's like, oh my God, I hate marketing, spot it, be like, oh yeah, there you are, I see you. Stop it, be like, no, that's not helpful for me and swap it with something else that is going to help you. Okay, 
Um, so for example, the, the, you mentioned that maybe there's a client who's really demanding, maybe it's a small booking, but he or she is still being very, very demanding. You would just recognize that you're frustrated with this client because you're not, you don't feel like the payoff is maybe worth, worth the work or the aggravation that you're put, putting in. You would, and yeah. you would stop, stop it and maybe swap it with a different feeling. Yeah. Be like, okay. well, that client is, is, is high touch, but I'm probably going to do a really great booking for them and yeah. they're going to refer me to another people, get something out of it for you. Um, or maybe it's time for you to actually look at the client and be like, if I don't like working with this person, I, I need to move on from, from being their travel agent. Okay. Um, all right. So when we spoke earlier in the week, you mentioned a couple other things, Heather, that I know are good daily habits to have to improve your mindset. And the first one that I want to just talk about a little bit, as you said, surrounding yourself with positive people is, is going to be a big factor going forward. Yeah. So, and I know probably some people are like, well, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to seek them out. You, you really have to find them. Um, and social media is a really great way of finding them. It's not necessarily about in-person connections. And realistically, I know that you're not going to be able to weed out all the negative people in your life, but it's about being in contact or being witness to or consuming more people that are in a positive mindset than negative. And it's about preparing yourself to be around those negative people in a way that allows you to really put a barrier on so you're not impacted by negativity. As I said before, negativity is often like a cancer and it grows and grows and grows. And, and if you're around negative people all the time, it's inevitable that you're going to start to feel that as well. So it's about figuring out what works for you in order for you to put a barrier up so you don't get sucked into their negative perspective on things. So things like self-care is super important. Things like journaling, things like um, figuring out who in your life is one of those negative people that you need to really prepare for in order to make sure you're not sucked into, into, um, into their mindset. Yeah. The, again, I think that is easier said than done. Um, yeah. Like social media, like you mentioned at the beginning that have what negativity, how that plays a role in our, in our lives simply because of the nature of being human. And it seems like social media, like maybe I'm, I'm venting right now, but social media becomes like these giant avenues for soul for negativity a lot of times, because that's, what's getting pushed when there are a lot, of, a lot of interactions, things like that. So, I mean, would you recommend, I guess, being careful or recognizing the role social media might be playing in your mind? Yeah, honestly, uh, I mean, again, our mindset is a learned thing. So no yeah. matter what we're consuming for information, it's it's having an impact on our mindset. So who we follow on social media, shows we watch, books we read, how much we how much time we're consuming other people's information. One of the best changes I did in my life was I really audited who I follow, what my in information channels were. So I edited Facebook, Instagram, and it came down to me, if I saw a post from someone that made me stop, I had to sit and think, okay, how does that make me feel? Does that make me feel how I want to feel? Inspired, calm, and balanced? If the answer was no, they were gone. I had to either mute them or unfollow them or whatever I needed to do. It also comes down to emails you read and uh, radio stations you listen to. I don't even watch the news anymore because for me, it was as soon as I watched the news, I didn't feel the way I wanted to feel. That five minute segment, good, the good story segment that they throw into every newscast wasn't enough for me. And so I had to make the decision that Again, I go back to like, the first thing I need to do is make the decision that I wanted to work on my on my mindset. And two, I need to take those deliberate actions and filter out the people that didn't, that the information that I was consuming that didn't help me feel the way I wanted to feel. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. I mean, when I first joined all these social media platforms, it seemed like so... It seemed yeah. like you were building a collage and you were just everyone to follow, follow, follow. But yeah, you, like you have to realize that you don't need to be following everybody. Um, no. and you can be a little more discerning about who you fill your feed up with. It's it's so important because yeah. uh, now all we're doing is consuming other people's mindset. And yeah. so if you want to be mindful about your own mindset, you need to make sure that the only thing you're consuming is the mindset of what you want to feel. Um, all right. So Jennifer says she's blocking all our family members on social media. <laughs> um, I mean, 
honestly, <laughs> if, if they don't, <laughs> it's fair. It's totally yeah. fair. Um, all right. So I know we're running a, a little short on time, but Heather, there was another one you mentioned, which we talked about on this on this program before, and it was just. And I know it might be something again that could produce an eye roll, but how important exercise is uh, to keep your to keep a level head and to keep a healthy mindset. Yeah, so exercise is one of those things that, I, and and I'll be honest with you, exercise isn't the key for everybody. I'll give you that out. <laughs> what I encourage you to do is just like I was talking about figuring out how you feel after every single social media post that you that you consume figure out how you feel after exercise. Obviously, we can't deny that exercising is good for our bodies, but um, if we're talking about mindset, yes, exercise is, is a tool that a lot of people find helps them because of the endorphins that we release, because of just the physicality release that we have when we exercise. But more so what exercise does for us is it gives us a sense of, I'm taking care of myself and, when we talk about burnout and overwhelm, it's because we're not doing enough of that. And so that's what exercise does for us. It allows us to understand that like, we've got this, I am able to take care of myself. I'm going to be okay. And look at, look at all that I've done. I've just done that whole workout and it's amazing. So if that's how you feel after you work out, yes, it'll absolutely have a huge impact on your mindset because your mind's a negative mindset is all about not believing in your own abilities and not believing that you're going to be okay no matter what but exercise allows us to feel better about ourselves and that's why it helps our mindset yeah and we had uh we had alg vacations had there we had one of their health or wellness or mind coaches come on at the end of last year and that's something he recommended to exercise just being able to like you mentioned, accomplish something every day, even the, even if it might, might, even if your day has gone poorly, at least you sort of checked the box off. You could look at, you could, when you're falling asleep, you can look at your day and, and give yourself props for, for even if it's a small thing for something. Yeah. And sometimes like, again, speaking about mindset, it's just about looking after yourself. It's, it's knowing that you're going to be okay. And if exercise does that for you, great. If it's taking a bath, that's amazing too. Uh, again, this yeah. is just speaking about mindset, not physical physical well-being yeah. it's just about um, looking after yourself and i know you mentioned it heather a little bit before when you, we were talking about um journaling but we did mm -hmm. guess say that meditation is great and i know that's another thing that seems like very foreign to a lot of people yeah. um but is something you recommend or, or something you would tell people to try out at least yeah so there's a there's a misconception about uh meditation in thinking that it's about not having thoughts people often think and i used to think this too that meditation was about like wiping your brain from all thoughts and that's actually not what meditation is or my perspective on meditation and a lot of people that i interact with meditation is a really great way for you to witness your thoughts to be to be witness to them from that different perspective um so what happens when you meditate is you're looking at your thoughts kind of floating by as a cloud and looking at it being like oh okay well there that is um so it, it, it i find it really allows me to look at my thoughts from that different perspective if journaling isn't going to work for you try meditation because it is a way for you to look at at the thoughts that are happening uh, from a different perspective and once you get more practice with it you are actually able to quiet the mind a little bit because you're not so reactive to those thoughts you're just kind of witnessing them go by um any like again meditation for me i've never done it it seems very foreign it seems like learning to play an instrument almost like but any like if you if you had to advise someone like me, someone who's never done it before, to start meditating, like any I guess any anywhere to go, any avenues to pursue, anything that could help me start out on this kind of journey. Um. Yeah. So one thing is is uh. There's lots of apps that you can do. There's Calm. There's Balance. They have okay. um. They have great meditations. And. I encourage you to forget everything that you know about um, meditation, go into it with as an open mind as you can um, and start small. And I mean, a minute, <laughs> start yeah. for one minute. Don't go into like five minutes of meditation, truly start small and do your best to remove all judgments that you have on yourself when you start meditating. Cause oftentimes 
when I started and, and I think I've, I've heard this from a lot of other people, when you start meditating, you're like, I'm not doing it right. <laughs> I'm not doing it right. Yeah. There's no right or wrong in meditation. It really is just about spending time with yourself and, and a lot about your mindset is building that relationship with yourself. And, um, meditation is a great way for you to really start just fostering that, that inner connection with your mind and your, and your heart and figuring out like what's actually happening in there. Cause a lot of times we're very disconnected from it. Yeah. And I guess not feeling silly or like, there's no reason for you to feel silly if you're, if you're, if you're doing this, if you, if for you're me, meditating. Would be, yeah. If you're meditating by yourself in a room with no other no other person, who's gonna, who's gonna uh, make who's gonna think you're silly? <laughs> like, okay. <All> right. um, <laughs> Nobody. Right. The only person that's gonna think you're silly is you, and you have power over that. You can be like, I'm not silly. I've just started. It's just like it's just like anything. You have to, in order to be good at something, you have to risk not being good at it first. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so I know there's a couple other things we want to talk about and I, but I don't want to forget the question we had in the beginning, Heather, particularly, particularly because it was something you mentioned. Um, burnout, I know is something that can bring on these negative or put you in a negative mindset pretty easily. Yeah. Anything you want to add, but aside from what we've spoken about when it comes to burnout, I know it's a lot of, it's a common feeling amongst travel advisors. It's a common feeling a lot of, a lot of people in the world right now. Um, any practical tips or anything else you think is important to bring up? Yeah. Depending on your level of burnout, while well, there's a couple of things, burnout is a progressive, uh, condition. So we often start out in like mild discomfort and it grows and grows and grows. And so if burnout isn't addressed, it can actually lead to very serious problems, mental uh, conditions like depression and chronic fatigue and things like that. So if you feel burnout, it, it's something that you need to address immediately. It's not something that you can kind of sit on and hope that it goes away. Um, and think about burnout as, you know, if you don't plug in your cell phone, it goes into low power mode where the apps are still working, but they're at lower function. That's truly what burnout is. It's about still being able to function well, except extreme burnout. But if you're in like mild burnout, you're not firing at full capacity. You're not able to be your best self if you're burnt out. And so, and the only way to reverse or stop burnout is to plug yourself back in. And how do you do that? Burnout often happens when we feel an imbalance of responsibility versus like reward. So our responsibilities are everything that we have to take care of in our life, our family, our job, our household, our relationships, we're taking care of everything else. And there's no reward for us in the form of self-care, time off, fun, joy, laughing, um, all of those things that help us feel better. And so when we are burnt out, it's because it's very imbalanced. Um, and so in order to stop burnout, you need to plug yourself into the things that help you feel better. Self-care is key. Talking to someone about it, making sure that you're not just withholding all of these emotions. You have an outlet for them. Um, doing the things like journaling and exercising, seeking help of, of a professional that can really help you um, change the structure of how your day looks to ensure that you're allowing the time that you need in order to feel taken care of from the inside out. Yeah, it does. It does seem like the nature of this career uh, leads to that, like just jumping from one treadmill to the next, like one booking to the next. Yeah. You have clients because you just constantly need clients coming in. So it seems like just it just like it fits so well to be burned out. Um, and I think the tips are great, Heather. One thing I do want to ask is. What would you say are the characteristics of burnout or the clues that you may may be burnt out that there is yeah. you need to start on this journey? Um overwhelming feel feeling of frustration and anger and resentment are often key indicators of it. Um feeling like you're kind of uh treading water, like the water line is here and you're just gasping. That is yeah. one of the easiest kind of visuals that I can give when it comes to burnout. There's no breaks, there's no relief. It's just constant and you don't have any way. You there's no there's no breaks ahead. And one of the the things that I found with travel agents especially is that they're at this level until their vacation and then they feel like, "Oh, I'll go away for a week and I'll feel so much better." 
But what happens is real life still happens when they come back. And then they're like, dang, that that vacation did nothing for me. So it's really a systemic problem in, in making sure that you adapt your everyday life in your everyday bubble to make it so you can actually be taken care of and looked after and not have to wait till your holiday, not have to wait till you go on that airplane vacation. Like it's just, you, yeah. you can't, you can't wait until the holidays. Yeah. You can enjoy your life Monday through Friday as well. As, Absolutely. Yeah. It's just small things. Like it's really just about adapting and getting creative with how you set up your day to make sure that you are making it work for you and not against you. Um, so I have one more from the chat that came in earlier, then I'll have one last one, Heather. And uh, Jennifer asked earlier about setting boundaries with the clients, which I guess goes to this burnout conversation as well. Um, I know you worked as a frontline advisor at one point, and I know you talk to a lot of advisors nowadays. And I know it's a difficult thing to do, but any tips or any any words of wisdom on setting boundaries with the clients? So setting boundaries is actually key, not just with clients, but with everyone. And in order for you to have that balance and calm that we that we so crave it's all about boundaries and when it comes to the setting the boundaries with our clients we often feel that guilt and the guilt is like the thief of joy it is absolutely going to steal us of all the joy that we could possibly find in this role because when we continuously work with people it gives us one money and and two it is a sense of joy in working with them but as soon as we're done working for them we're just left like depleted and have no energy and that type of thing so we really have to allow ourselves to set clear and non-negotiable boundaries around our time and energy just like i was talking about before about like the the negative people we have to set a boundary with either those people or with ourselves to like, I can only hang out with them for 20 minutes and then I have to exit because that's my boundary. Um, and when it comes to clients, don't be afraid to fire a client if they're really not helping you. If if dealing with a client is, is truly not allowing you to be the travel agent that you want to do because you're frustrated and mad or feeling distracted because you have to do so many other things, then maybe it's time to set that boundary. And so you can be better for the people that you have the time for. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah. Um, and we actually did a couple on, on firing clients or, or setting boundaries. So if you yeah. do want more information, yeah, you can take a look at those. Um, all right, Heather, it was really great to talk to you. I know we covered a ton right today. Um, I like want to... <laughs> I want to leave you. Hours. <laughs> I, I want to leave you with, uh, I guess one one last one. Um, I know again we we covered a lot. We we jumped we jumped around. We covered a lot of different topics. Um, I'm just yeah. curious because I know you talk to advisors a lot. If you could give all the guests today, if you hope they take away one thing from this, I mean, any anything you would hope would be that one nugget of information that they do take and they do start to implement or sort of think about moving forward. Yeah. It was hard to just come up with one because you told me you were going to ask this question. Um, I think the key thing that I want to empower you all with is that you're not a finished product, that your mindset is something that you can adapt and you can shift into a more positive growth mindset and to help you be now and the person that you want to grow into. It's it's you have all of the power and that you deserve to feel good in your job and you deserve to feel confident and you deserve to have the control and be empowered in your life. And I know it might seem hard, but it really is just small deliberate actions in order for you to help implement the strategies to help you feel good and empowered and control and all of those things. So yeah, I just want to to help people understand that you have the power, you have all the control and it's and it's and it's up to you, but you have help out there if you need it. All right. Well, Heather, I really want to thank you again. Um I know I took a lot of away from this conversation and I hope everyone on the on the call did too. 